Mark Rogers, TV Talk and some Miami football with, uh, I'm not going to sell him as the best information source solely. I'm going to say with the combination of information, insight, the storylines, the backstories, and definitely the energy and the knowledge and the tidbits and everything and throw in the pipes. And uh, it's tough to beat with uh, Cam Underwood from State of the U. Uh, Cam with Mark Walton and any running back, they, they want to touch the football as much as possible. But there are extremes, and if something doesn't change in, in uh, the depth of the backfield at Miami, then Mark Walton's going to see maybe the football a little bit too much. So Mark Richt has gone to uh, possibly a, an avenue that wouldn't be available to him just maybe about 10 years ago to try to find uh, some more running back depth. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's been one of the big storylines throughout this spring. Uh, lost Joe Yearby to the NFL draft uh, as an early enrollee. And, you know, he's 22 years old and has two kids, so that was really his decision. And he'd fallen down to third in the depth chart, so, you know, he's probably not going to elevate his draft stock, so he left. Gus Edwards then transferred to Rutgers, um, and he had kind of leaped into that third running back area over Joe Yearby, so he lose two, those two guys. Um, and then uh, Robert Burns is an early enrollee running back from Miami Columbus, sorry, uh, Gulliver Prep. Um, but he's been injured since his sophomore year. He was awesome as a freshman and sophomore in high school, but junior and senior year, uh, yeah, just very injury plagued. And then he got injured early in spring practice and missed the whole rest of that. Uh, Trayon Gray, who I previously mentioned as one of the borderline academic cases who qualified recently at Miami, uh, he tore his knee uh, last se- or before last season or early in the season. Um, so he missed time with that. So he's recovering from a knee and – the only other running back other than Mark Walton, who you previously mentioned, is Travis Homer, who was a four-star recruit in the 2016 recruiting class from uh, West Palm Beach Oxford Academy. And there ended the list of running scholarship running backs at Miami, which is a problem. So you really have Mark Walton, who's a workhorse. You have Travis Homer, who had seven carries as a true freshman, really made his mark on special teams. But when you're behind Walton and Yearby and uh, Gus Edwards, it's tough for a freshman to really get carries, but he's going to step up and have a big role. And then you got two guys who have been injured. You know, some people, you know, Trayon Gray had all the talent in the world. He played quarterback at Carroll City in high school. He threw for a little bit over a thousand yards, but any play would break down and he would just pull that ball. He just, whoo, boy. I mean, he was incredible, but, you know, he runs a little high for a running back and trying to get some of those uh, pad level issues and his vision and things like that, but has all the physical tools. Robert Burns, after his freshman year of high school, had the highest spark rating at the Nike um, training camps, the opening regionals. He had the highest rating in opening regional history at the time, taking into account um, vertical jump, power ball toss, uh, the 20 yard, the three cone drill, and 40 yard dash. So he's an amazing athlete at five foot 10, 215, 220 pounds. He just can't stay injured or he can't stay healthy because he's always injured. So. Yeah, so you're really looking at Walton and Homer and then question mark, question mark. So, um, yeah, Mark Richt has been looking for a grad transfer at running back after having lost Yearby and Edwards. Uh, thought they, uh, Miami was in a good place with Tyshawn Dye, who was a grad transfer from Clemson, but he chose instead to go to East Carolina. Now, I know people were trolling me and trolling Miami on Twitter about it, but it's going to be hard to get somebody to come down here and be third string at best because – you know, Homer is here, and he's really, really good. Had a slew of 85, 90, 95. He had 99-yard touchdown in high school and multiple of those. So, I mean, he has the speed, the size. I mean, he, this kid is good. Even if, you know, he only got limited carries as a true freshman, this kid is really good, and he's going to play a lot. Mark Walton is the best returning running back in the ACC. He's a top five or ten returning running back in the country this year. I mean, Mark Walton is really good. And, I mean, he had almost 1,200 yards last season. He's probably going to be 1,300, 1,400 yards this season. And then you have Homer behind him. So you're trying to get a grad transfer to come in here to be third string at the best. And that's if Trayon Gray isn't healthy and improving. That's if Robert Burns isn't healthy and ready to go. So it's tough. And, you know, getting to your, your point, Mark Richt went on Twitter after Tyshawn Dye uh, committed to East Carolina, and he said, yeah, we're, uh, the Canes are still looking for a grad transfer running back. It's great to be a hurricane. And people are like, oh, my God, Miami's recruiting off of Twitter. Da, da, da. I mean, 
I saw Florida was having open tryouts for several positions on Twitter uh, for walk-ons from their school, but nobody wants to talk about that because they put it up as a graphic. They didn't put it up as a head coach doing a tweet. And I get it, like, what? and I'm not trying to say, you know, woe is me and everything, but, hey, Mark Rich is looking to every way possible now because, like, dude, we need another scholarship running back at Miami because you have to be prepared for the future. It's like, and I live in Miami, like, or South Florida. If there's a hurricane coming, you need to have your stuff ready. You need to have food. You need to have water. You need to, all those things to be prepared in case of an emergency. We, the Miami Hurricanes roster needs to be prepared in case of an emergency because, God forbid, you know, Mark Walton blows out a knee or Travis Homer tears an Achilles. I don't want, I'm knocking on my wood table here. I don't want that to happen. But injuries happen. Look at Gus Edwards, who missed a full season because of a, a an ankle injury. Look at Trayon Gray, who missed a season last year because of a knee. Look at Lawrence Cager, tore up a knee. Look at your favorite team, if you're not a Miami Hurricanes fan, the insert player here, Josh Rosen, Rosen could be the number one player taken in the 2018 NFL draft. What happened to him last year? Shoulder injury, done, played half the season. Injuries happen, and you have to be prepared for that. And I just don't think that Miami is prepared for that, especially considering Robert Burns has been injured for the majority of the last two seasons. As a high school senior, he had nine carries and two kickoff returns, and that's it for the entire season, right? You know, Treyon Gray been injured two times over the last three years. Like, you need other guys. So hopefully Mark Rick's Twitter um, recruiting will work. Maybe the, the staff is finding a late qualifier or a, a Juco guy who – you know, might not have another place to go. But, hey, you know what? You get a Miami education. You get on a team that hopefully is going to be good, hopefully goes to a premium bowl, hopefully, you know, wins 10 games and goes to the ACC championship game for the first time in program history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, there's that opportunity there. So, you know, I know it's a, a non-conventional recruiting route, but uh, just like Coach Larinaga with transfers and the grad transfer market in basketball, Mark Richt is looking to every available avenue to get a, a – a grad transfer running back. And hopefully that happens uh, just because we need that depth really, really badly. I don't know what the injury distribution is per position across uh, both sides of the football, but no other position handles the football more than the quarterback. And a large percentage of the time, he doesn't get hit when he's handling the ball. The running back gets hit every time and they are touching the ball more than any other position on the field, except the quarterback. So, I would think that the, the running back injury uh, rate is a little bit higher than some other positions. 